the Michigan State Spartans looked great. I that that's all I have for you. We'll talk it more in depth than that. But as far as setting it up goes, Michigan State was really good and more importantly, really fun. Like I said, you were calling it out on Twitter. A lot of Michigan State fans just excited to have something fun that is back. What a wild swing in the last five days for Michigan State to go from 49-0 to now Jim Harbaugh might go to jail. And oh, by the way, our basketball team's ready for the final four. And oh, by the way, Urban Meyer's coming. I mean, that's just a crazy five-day swing. Uh, but in the meantime, this basketball team looks really, really deep, which we knew on paper, and they look just like one of the must-watch teams. If there was an NBA league pass thing for college basketball, Michigan State would be there. Uh, Michigan State scored 85 points in this game. I believe it was a 40-something point win. I don't have Hillsdale stats in front of me, but I do have Michigan State stats in front of me. Uh, Tyson Walker and Carson Cooper led the team with 13 points. Cohen Carr next up with 12 Jaden Aikens with 10, everybody else very balanced. Every single player that is not a walk-on scored in this game. Again, very deep team. What are your first impressions of your Michigan State Spartans? Yeah, the, the team's just fun, I think. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to make a rash, like, wins, losses. We're doing this. Yes, I did tweet, like, I'll see you in Phoenix when Xavier Booker got in and hit that first three. That was more so just me just messing around, trolling a little bit. But I think this team is going to be fun. I think they're going to play different also uh, in, as the past couple of years. It seemed like Michigan State slowed down a little bit uh, in the past couple of years. I think that they realize they have a team that can run. Uh, Tyson Walker is going to be incredible this year for this team. Jay Nakins looked like he was doing Jay Nakins things. Carson Cooper looked improved. Uh, the freshman showed some things. Uh, really like what Jeremy Fears was able to do, even though he looked a little bit sped up. He did have four turnovers in this game. He was still able to tally eight assists in this game, which I believe was tied with A.J. Hogard for the lead. So, you know, all in all, just a fun game. Saw a lot of fun things. Cohen Carr is a monster. Uh, I don't think I, I might have missed it in the film I watched on him, but I didn't realize that he was so relentless attacking the glass, especially on the offensive end. Uh, I think he can improve a little bit on that on the defensive end if he attacked it with the same veracity. But, uh, man, he attacks the offensive glass hard. Carson Cooper was all, all over the offensive glass. I mean, it, it, there's not really many negatives to me to say about the the, the team. Uh, the, if I did have to pick one, I was really kind of a little bit disappointed with Malik Hall's play. I thought his decision-making was off. And the, the, the hitch and the jumper, it looks like it might have gotten a little bit worse. I don't know if that's a mental thing, but – all in all, just, you know, a dominant, fun game against a bad Hillsdale team. And I'll take it, but there's a lot that I'll be looking for in the next couple of games, especially in the exhibition, like we mentioned, that's going to happen this Sunday against Tennessee. Really good, really fun team. That's the right takeaway. You should play up the fun of this as much as you can, obviously. Like, I had no problem with, like, the, oh, the Final Four is back tweets. I have no problem with that from you. Um I just on the fun note, I just want to say this, and this isn't, I promise this isn't me trying to hate, but uh, something about this team, I don't know what it is, is not reaching the peak level of fun that the, like the cash year when they were young has. And maybe that'll change for me. I just don't know what it is. I think it's like, like, I know Michigan State's really good. I really enjoyed watching the freshmen in this game more than I enjoyed watching the starters. And I know it was a lot of like platoon system stuff. Maybe uh, like, I think when you play real competition, I would assume it's not platoons. Although I actually do want to talk platoons in a moment because I think it could be a good move, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just like, like no offense to the team because the team is very good. But I don't view that starting group as some special group. I think they're a very good basketball team that has experience and depth and a liability at center and now a liability at the four. <laughs> and when that group's together, I'm not no offense, I'm not afraid of that group. That's a group that's going to split with Michigan, most likely, in that group. What makes this team exciting and special to me is all these new faces off the bench. And I think there was a lot of really, really good things from those guys. That's not me clamoring for more minutes. It's an exhibition. I'm probably not even going to clamor for more minutes during the season because the starters are really good. But just from the fun perspective, like, oh, that was so fun. I'm having a hard time, like, matching that until I see the freshmen, like, mixed in with the starters a little more because – no, uh, from my perspective, I don't think that starting group is super 
fun. I think the, the fun is Cohen Carr and Xavier Booker and Jeremy Pierce to me. Does that – am I way off there as, like, an objective viewer? Like, I, I don't think this approach, like, the Nick Ward, Cassius, Josh Langford fun freshman year. No, like I think, uh, and for people who are listening to this, I, I'm making a visual representation right now that I'll make in the audio form as well. So you can see it with the YouTube people. In my right hand here, I have, you know, the vets, I guess you would say. You get me AJ Hogard, you get me Jay Nakins, and you get me Tyson Walker. In my left hand here, separated currently, I have the fun guys. You got Cohen Carr, Jeremy Fear, Xavier Booker, throwing Carson Cooper in that mix as well. I want to bring those two together and I want those, I want that group to mesh. And I want that group to mesh. And then you can have my left elbow, the other guys, they can be over there. They can get in this mesh, but they need to be away, away from the fun and the meshing of the vets and the fun. So you know, I don't think you're too far off there. My wish or, you know, my hope for this is that, as we go farther along in the season, maybe that's the realization that, you know what, we take this three-headed kind of vetty backcourt wing guys that we got in A.J. Hogard, Tyson Walker, and Jay Nakins, and then you mix that with the fun guys, and then you can have maybe those other vet guys that can come in and have a chance to do some things as well, but maybe that fun group isn't doing what they need to do. But I don't think you're too far off in that because, like you said, it got fun once Cohen Carr, Jeremy Fears, and Xavier Booker got in the game. And shit, honestly, I'll even eat crow on this. Trey Holloman was low-key fun in that game mm-hmm. for, for parts of that game. He did show some improvements. Granted, it was against Hillsdale, but he was fun in that game. Same with Carson Cooper. So um, we're not going to make absolutely, like, crazy overreactions, like change the starting lineups right now or anything like that. But I will say it should be as a note that you know, there should be like a maybe thought that later in the season you can mix those two groups of like fun and vets and see what it looks like. So I think it could look really, really good. Yeah, they're, all the parts are there. You just got to put the puzzle together. And like I said, that that is not me speaking on anything about how good this team is. This team's nasty. Every Everything I took away from last night's game was this team's going to be really, really good, just purely from a fun perspective. Because I'm, I'm p- comparing this team on paper – as far as fun goes, I'm comparing them to like the Jaron year where you had that awesome sophomore class back. You had some experience and then you had this generational freshman like all together. But the five guys on the floor at any given time were all like freak fun NBA guys or great college players that were super fun. This year's team, like I, I can't my fun brain can't get past like Madi Sissoko on the floor for 20 minutes for this team. That's not fun. Like, and I don't mean to harp on Madi, but I, that's that's where this sort of starts for me. Um, let's move into actual basketball, though, not just fun. Nobody cares on who I think is fun or not. Uh, you called out Trey. I Holloman. Care. You call You called out Trey Holloman. Uh, I'll lump him in together with Carson Cooper, two guys that I maybe we, but more me, have been very harsh on. Have kind of said I don't see it at all. I don't think you guys want these guys in the rotation. Well, Trey, I thought, looked much improved. Um, I know Coy, some people in the Discord didn't necessarily see it the way we did with Trey. I'm not saying he was mind-blowing, but uh, last year I thought Trey was unplayable every time he stepped on the floor. This year I'm like, oh, he actually, like, he had a steal-turned assist. He hit a three. Like, he was doing productive things on the basketball court this year for the first time I've ever seen. And Cooper, uh, shout-out to DK. I'll give him credit. I mean, he's been waving this kid's flag since the moment he stepped on the floor. And I've just thought he was flat out wrong. I thought he was ponying up for a guy he just likes watching more than Kohler and Madi. But uh, again, competition level aside, Carson Cooper looked really, really good last night. You can see it. He's mobile. He can catch the basketball. He can do a lot of these things that Madi Sissoko struggles with. Um, I see the makings of the best center on this roster right now in Carson Cooper. So do you agree with me? Like, are, are those two guys that you kind of were surprised in a positive way by from this game? Yeah, I mean, I, I think looking at it head to head, you know, Carson can just do things that Madi can't really do. And uh, speaking to also, I do want to shout out DK for doing that and also calling that out because he he definitely did. And I definitely pushed back on him with Carson Cooper. Granted. Still got a lot of season goals, still got a lot of games to go. But right now, I I, I see what he sees. Um, 
but the thing that people would say would be like Madi is more of a physical presence than any of the other centers. Now I don't necessarily think he's the most physical presence on the floor. Like Carson Cooper looks physically bigger. He looks stronger. Uh, he looks just as quick as Madi. Um, I still see the struggles on the defensive end as far as rebounding, uh, not necessarily defensively, but defensive rebounding. There was a lot of moments in yesterday's game where it seemed like Cooper and especially when he was on the floor with Booker, they were really struggling to secure rebounds against a very, very undersized Hillsdale team. Um, so that was a cause for concern for me. But I just think when you look at it, you go head to head. There's not really much that Madi does better than Carson. Like it, that's just, that's just is what it is. Now that doesn't mean that you don't play Madi at all. I think you're going to need a backup center, but I think that maybe the role should be switched between who's the backup and who's the main guy. Yeah. And I don't know that they will be. Um, I mean, it's, it's day one, so I don't, I don't want to say anything definitively, but it, it certainly feels like to me is always comfortable with Madi Sissoko as his starting center, at least with the three guards. Like, I don't know necessarily if that is what it is, if Madi's just like wired in defensively with those guys, but um, I don't think he'll be swift to make any changes, no matter how good Carson Cooper looks, quite frankly, because I think he's pretty comfortable with Madi. Um, yeah, I let's talk about the freshman a little bit. Certainly flashes from all of them in this game. Xavier Booker stepped right up, made a three almost immediately. He made two threes in this game. Cohen Carr was third on the team in scoring. He had the highlight dunk. Uh, I mean, his athleticism is off the charts. Everybody knows that. But there, there's no way to physically match this guy for any team in the country, let alone Hillsdale. Jeremy Fears finishes with eight assists, which is the same number that A.J. Hogard finished with. Um, uh, look, productive, about as productive as you could want from those three guys to start their careers. Uh, the eye test to me told me a different story a little bit with some of these guys. And I kind of want to go one by one. But let's start with Booker. Booker did not play a minute, as far as I could tell. He did not play a minute at center in this game. It was all Cooper. It was all Mahdi, just two centers at the five. We had circled that as something we were paying attention to. Uh, he he drifts to the perimeter a lot. So I'm less screaming that he should play center after seeing game one. I think there would be some concerns there, but uh, I still think on paper it would be nice if he could be the small ball guy. What did you see there so 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 this is what i saw and i did notice that he was drifting a bit as the four i think he would drift a lot less if he was the five because if he's the five and you're like booker go set a pick roll or go set a pick pop whatever it might be depending on maybe who the four is at the, at the time on the floor but i feel like because he was at the four he was drifting a lot and he was just kind of drifting to the corner drifting to the wing i think he would drift a lot less if he played some minutes at the five and, you know, frankly, it was a little bit disappointing to see him not get minutes at the five in a game against Hillsdale. Like that would have been that, that would have been the time to try it. Uh, I'm hoping that they do try it this Sunday, to be honest with you. I think they should at least give it a little bit of a run. Like, why not now? Why not in the exhibition? But I, I, I might be wrong on this, but I truly believe that if he did play the five, he might float a little bit less. OK, I like that take. That's a, a I like that like basketball sense take. Because, yeah, if you're playing the four next to Madi Sissoko, where's he supposed to be? Rim running? <laughs> That's not going to work. The paint's all clogged, and A.J. Hogard can't go anywhere. So, I, uh, I overall, I was very impressed with Booker. Um, I would give him – I guess I'll just give him a B. I'll give him a B for this because I had high expectations. But – a couple red flags for me. One, he didn't play a minute at center, which I'm not blaming the staff on. Maybe they want to keep things simple to start. That's probably good. Don't throw too much at this kid. But two, I do think we saw the IQ effort stuff a little bit defensively. Um, and I, I think that's just part of who he is. Hopefully that improves, but it's a reason why people are so divided on him as a recruit. It's like why you saw the tantalizing rise up to the fifth best player in the country and then the fall back to 80 because it's like this guy's lazy. I don't. I wouldn't summarize his whole game as lazy last night, but there were moments where you could pick it out where like he's just not working that hard. And that's obviously got to change if he's going to earn real minutes in a front court where – there's Malik Hall, there's Cohen Carr, who is working hard, and then there's two centers. Like, I, I started doing the math on this. If he's really going to play a true center the whole game at the five, somebody's getting squeezed out at the four. 
because there's nowhere to go. You can't slide guys down when you have Aikens, Walker, and Hogard. Like, they're, they're going to have to play 80 minutes combined for five guys of Cohen, Karma, Lee, Hall, Booker, and the two centers. And, like, I, I like what I saw from Booker. I think he's the best shot blocker of the bunch. I think he's the best perimeter threat of the bunch. And that matters. But I'm starting to get concerned that, like, he might be fifth on the totem pole here as far as role could go because of his effort concerns. Yeah, and I think it's important, too, as well, is that I I feel like for the most part last night was what we saw was Booker playing with Cooper, right, if I'm not mistaken. Which I like as a pairing, by the way. Like that's I like. Which I do like as a pairing. That's what I'm saying. Like I feel like you gotta have. If you are gonna play him at the four, you gotta have a certain five. If at any point this year we have Booker and Sissoko out there as as the front court, I think it'll be a disaster defensively, just because the IQ won't be there as far as uh you know defensively especially. Um. So uh, you know even even like giving it a go of Booker at the five and like Cohen Carr at the four, I think would be worth taking a look at I, I i just think it would be um but yeah it was it for for all in all i think it was a good performance by booker but you can definitely see the awareness iq things especially on the defensive end of the floor you can see that yeah okay um i want to do the other freshman but i feel like we should do malik hall right off the back of talking xavier booker because that's sort of where this comes into play for me i was wildly unimpressed with malik in this game Um, my read on this eye test wise is he's either got a hitch in his shot or confidence issues with his shot or something, but this is not a guy who we saw early in his career where he was a big time shooting threat to me. And this is the first moment of many. I think we'll probably mention this, this year, this team is really going to miss Joey Hauser. Like they really are going to miss Joey Hauser because I I think the two things you would circle from this game and say, I don't know, are rebounding, which Joey was your best rebounder last year. And you didn't really have a perimeter threat in the front court other than Booker. Booker banged two threes. But uh, I think the hope was kind of Malik Hall could shoulder some of that like veteran, I'm going to go get boards and I'm going to be a three and D guy. I don't trust his three at all right now. I I just straight up don't think this guy is a shooter. And uh, I, I don't think if we're trying to add up, like what is Malik Hall going to do that helps this team more than Cohen Carr and Xavier Booker? He's not shooting it better than Booker through one game. And I don't think he's ever going to be the rebounder that Cohen Carr is just physically. So my stock down, if I did say like stock down one guy, it's hugely on Malik Hall in this game. Um, am I being too critical there? No, I just, I it, it's, it's for me, the most disappointing part. And th- this is, Outside of the hitch, outside of those things like that, a guy who's been playing basketball, college basketball, and been in the system and built a team that long, making mental mistakes is just kind of inexcusable at this point. Like, it shouldn't be. And obviously, guys are going to make mistakes on the basketball court. That happens all the time. Um, Even mental mistakes happen. Like, no player is perfect. But there were just so many instances where I think the wrong decisions were made as far as, like, driving and passing. Um, And then – you know, I, I think a lot of people point to, the, like you said, the fact that Malik Hall has the ability to shoot. If Malik Hall is not hitting shots, which he's not doing and hasn't, frankly, done for a good amount of time now. Ever since he came back, it just seems like the hitch has just kind of been there. I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, you just look to maybe the, uh, what the other players on the floor. If Malik Hall is not giving you shooting and leadership and making the right play as a veteran – then it he kind of becomes a negative at times. Like that's why you have him on the floor is because he's an older guy who's been there a lot and is supposedly supposed to be versatile and can be, and have seen moments in his Michigan state career where he's versatile, but if he's not doing that, then it's like, you know, it's kind of hurting the team. And then you have other guys who can do some other things as well. So uh, one game obviously against Hillsdale, but like if we had to pick a stock down or, maybe uh, something to put a bookmark in that looking forward to might be a cause for concern. I I think it would be his play. Yeah. I don't mean to be overly critical, but it, it, to me, it's like, okay, let's go through the three options at the four. If you want defense rebounding physical, you play Cohen Carr. If you want shooting based on what I have seen and heard from this off season, I think you want Xavier Booker. And 
I, like, I guess, uh, what is it for Malik is the thing. Like, what is the thing we can point to? It's like, we need this right now at the four, so we need Malik Hall. I don't know what that thing is right now. Leadership, I guess. But, like, I to me, when you look at the rest of the roster, you don't need leadership out of your four. You have Tyson Walker and A.J. Hogard. So you don't need a guy to score 20 from the four. You have Tyson Walker and Jay Nakins. So, like, to me, Malik was really, really valuable three years ago on a team that, quite frankly, just didn't have talent because Malik Hall could drop into any given game in Bloomington and drop 24 points. Like, that, mm -hmm. when a team needed that, he was really valuable. This year's team needs shooting and defense from their force. And I think Malik Hall is arguably on paper the third of those three at both of those right now. So, um, yeah, I'd we'll agree. See, we'll, we'll see where it goes from here. The other two freshmen, Cohen Carr had the highlight moment. Everybody loves him. I mean, just such a fun player in general. I said I wanted to see more than dunks. Did you see more than dunks in this game? Mm. No, I mean, you saw the one move off of the dribble. Um, you saw the offensive rebounding, but really besides that, no, you didn't. You, did, you didn't even really see him. Did he have the chance to do it? No, he didn't really either. Um, he, like, moves extremely well without the ball, just as far as cutting and knowing when to go to the basket and things like that. Uh, but no, we did not see that. So uh, maybe a cause for him. So we didn't even see a free throw, did we? No, no, he did have a free throw. Did he make it? Uh, let me look. I don't believe he did make it. Okay. Um, and All to right. be honest with you, I don't remember like the how it looked or anything of that. Owen variety, Carr was so. 0, 0 for one from the line. Um, yeah, I. I'm not concerned. Like I, I still want to see it. I think you called it out correctly. He didn't need to do more than what he's great at in this game, which is probably a good thing. There probably won't be many games this year where Cohen Carr needs to do more than fly up and down the court and dunk. Um, mm -hmm. What I will say, are we sure we saw the offensive rebounding? He had one offensive rebound in this game. Well, I thought he would. I thought like just him attacking the glass in general, like there was a couple that Carson Cooper grabbed before him, but if Cooper didn't get it, he was going to get it. I mean, it's definitely a little bit of, of projecting. Um, okay on that but uh yeah because yeah, did, 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 did he only have one yeah so visually i came away the same way huh. you did i i watched the game and i was like that guy's gonna be the best offensive rebounder in the country like he's i and even in general i'm just like that guy's he's gonna be a menace on the boards like he he can be that good mm -hmm. and then i saw the box score and he finished with three total rebounds and uh no sorry two no, yes, three total rebounds, one offensive rebound, which uh, was less than Malik Hall in this game. I mean, shit, man, Tyson Walker led this team in rebounds. Like, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little shocked. But I, I mean, the rebounding, especially defensively, was a cause for concern for sure. Yeah, which is just weird because I, again, visually, I left that being like Cohen Carr's a menace there. But then you step back, it's like, no, is isn't he just jumping? Maybe like watch it back. Maybe he was just jumping and he didn't grab any of the re like that's he also did uh, on the defensive side. There were definitely moments where him and Xavier Booker combined were missing box outs. So mm -hmm. that's something to watch. Like on paper, this guy should immediately be one of the best rebounders there is. But just uh, a little bit of a, a miss there as far as the numbers compared to what our eyes told us. Now let's do fears. Um, I, I don't think there's anything people have loudly felt more different on than how I feel than Jeremy fears after this game. Now I want to preface this by saying, I think I have had such a high bar for Jeremy fears. That's probably affecting some of my opinions on this. I, if I had to compare him as a prospect to a player, it's always been Trey Burke. I've said that for over a year at this point, and I'm sticking with that. I was very unimpressed with what I saw from Jeremy fears in this game. And I think Michigan state fans will be upset with me on that. Cause all I've heard in our discord and elsewhere is like this kid would start anywhere in the country. I didn't see that at all. I know the assist numbers are there. Eight assists is incredible. We knew Jeremy fears had that. I'm not surprised that Jeremy fears got a lot of assists in this game. That's great. That's going to keep coming over and over again. I thought he had a lot more outside of that. And I still do like, I, I still am holding strong that I believe there is more than that in Jeremy fears right now. But I thought he struggled against Hillsdale at everything other than just running the transition offense and making the right pass. I expected mm -hmm. more in the half court. I expected him to be able to use his body and get to his spots and have some floater game. I thought he would finish at the rim better. 
I just thought he had all that. I've seen it before as a recruit, and maybe he wasn't forcing tonight. He didn't make bad decisions tonight. So, again, I'm not trying to say Jeremy Fears was bad. I just truly, based on my expectations, which was like, this kid could be Trey Perk 2.0, I thought I would see more. He got ripped by a couple of Hillsdale defenders. He missed a layup after driving through traffic against Hillsdale. I'm sh- I'm flat out shocked that he was disrupted once in this game by Hillsdale guards. Uh, am I being too critical of Jeremy Fierce? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's just because, like you said, we hold him in such a high regard, and I did expect him – to show some things more offensively. And, and I, I tried on my watch back. I didn't watch the full game back, but I was watching like the Matthew Loves uh, basketball channel, shortened, shortened, condensed highlights. And I I don't know what it is exactly. It just seemed like, I don't know, maybe like first game jitters or something like that. It just, just didn't seem all the way there for some reason. And I was trying to like make a, make an excuse. I don't know the words excuse or like think about why that was. And, you know, maybe it was him playing next to Trey Holland and maybe that didn't really necessarily work for him because he seemed like more of a setup guy. And then Trey Holloman was a guy who was either shooting and or attacking off closeouts off of Jeremy fears, making decision in the pick and roll. Um, but yeah, I, I, I did think that I expected him to be better in this game. And, that, and like you said, he didn't play bad. I'm not worried about Jeremy Fierce. I, I, I don't think it, it'll, it'll take something crazy for, I think for us both to be worried about what he's going to do and what he's going to be. But you just, but you, didn't, you didn't come away the, from that being like, this kid would start anywhere. That, like that's the, our discord. No, no, no. Like this guy's no. a starter on every other big 10 team. I'm like, I came away from this game being like, it's a blessing for everyone involved that he's the backup. Cause I, I think he needs yeah. like my read is he needs time after seeing yesterday. And I wasn't expecting yeah. that to be my read at all. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that, yeah, that, that's not what the takeaway I had from this game was, not at all. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, and that's, I mean, just to frame that up, like it, it it's not a this or that because it doesn't have to be. They're both going to play, but I, from watching that game, I thought Trey Holloman was better than Jeremy Fierce in that game. I don't think I ever thought I would say that, <laughs> and that's hard for me to square because I I thought Trey was good I still don't think Trey's a guy that you're pointing to like that guy should start everywhere I think he's a bench guard and the fact that I'm coming away from this game being like I thought Trey was better for Michigan State than it's just again they're good these are the fourth and fifth guards on this team this team is absurd they're loaded in the backcourt but uh let's just slow slow the roll a little bit because I think it looks really really good that Jeremy Fears can be the bench guy on this team I think that's a good thing for everyone involved uh Jay Nakins did he spend a minute on the ball in this game? Uh, he did. He did for a couple. Yeah, he did for a little bit. Yeah. He did? Yeah. Did I miss that? I think you did, yeah. Okay. I thought he was uh when he when he was on the court, he was the third guard and they were running Trey Holloman at point. No, he 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 was on the ball actually for a good amount of time. You got to send me the the segment of this game, then I must have <laughs> something happened where I didn't see that. Um, yeah. yeah, I just I I mean, Aikens is Aikens. We know he's very very good. Uh, zero assists, one turnover from Aikens. Uh, not exactly seeing the expanded on ball role that uh, we thought. Might happen. I I will I will tell you what, Gregory, watch this game back or watch back to those ball highlights. There were some passes made by Aikens that were just misses by other guys. He had like some drives and like swung to the corner one to Tyson oh. in particular where Tyson was wide open Tyson uh-huh. missed it we, yeah we got it back and actually Jay Nakins hit a three right after that uh he made some pretty nice passes actually uh it was, it was a lot of just I hate you he I did you. I, really I do. dog I, I like I'm not criticizing his passes he had some fantastic passes in this game I'm saying like we we were promised the whole point of him coming back was he was going to have an expanded role he didn't have that role which is why i said all summer if you want to get to the league and you need to be on ball why are you doing this to yourself like that's if you're not getting an expanded role against hillsdale is he really is he ever getting an expanded role i don't think so and i promise i'll stop talking about it because i know michigan state fans will just hate me for saying it but it's pretty damn true that's what's happening here like he's never going to be on the ball until these guards leave um okay i mean i mean what second most shots on the team that's not what people told him they need to see. <laughs> like he's, he's, that's oh. the whole point. He can be great. He's just going to be great in the same role. That's not getting him to the league. 
It is what it is. Like, but in, with that said, y'all better not tell me all. Don't spend all season being like Aikens is gone. Where the hell's he going? He's what? Well, start, start the one more year. Start the one more year chance right now. Get this guy on ball next year. We need to see it. Fears and Aikens. Final question: Michigan State finished fourth in everybody's preseason polls. Should they be higher, lower, or just right based on what you saw? Just right. Okay. I'd move them up. Really? I'd move them up. Who are you moving back? Kansas? I'm going to move Kansas back. I'm going to move Michigan State up to three in my personal poll right now. So uh, Purdue, Duke, Michigan State? Purdue one, Duke two, Michigan State three. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll leave them where they're at right now. I think that this would make for a good discussion on Monday, though, because we got Purdue, Arkansas Saturday and and Michigan State, Tennessee Sunday and Kansas, Illinois Sunday. Might just be me dreading it myself, but I'm starting to get the feel Purdue might just get smacked out of nowhere in the first game. I'm worried about That'd it. That'd be special. 